Good evening, brethren. This is Big Judah coming to you guys from California. Before I begin, I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. I also want to give all praises to the earthly mother, the Holy Spirit. I pray that they bless this lesson today and they give them understanding of some of the times that we're in and the things that are coming upon the earth and give some more clarification as to the times that we are moving into and the times that we're moving out of. You know, it's been a minute since I've uh, made a video. I feel the Spirit led me to the last couple of days uh, to make a video. I've been studying a couple things here about this uh, super blue, red blood moon coming up on the 31st. And I was watching a video, and I'm going to leave it in the description box. And of course, you know, when we're looking at videos from Gentiles, we got to take information with a grain of salt. You know, some of the information, you know, we got to learn how to let the spirit guide us through the information. Uh, what's, what's you know, good for us. And maybe what's some things that are kind of led, they're there to lead um, Gentiles and some some Hebrews astray. Okay. Now, um, this video has a lot of dates, a lot of information, you know, because really the most high deals with math. You know, math is like a universal language. You know, that he, uh, the Most High, puts a lot of his um, his information and his confirmation in the skies and mathematics and dates and things like that. And we need to be um, wary of, of, of that kind of, that kind of thing and be looking at those things. And in um, this video, you know, of course, they're always looking for a rapture date. You know, I'm not necessarily looking for any kind of rapture dates or anything like that, but I'll just see, I'm just looking for information that can be used to kind of uh, just confirm the times that we're in. Um, and like I say, this on the 31st, I guess it's something called a to be Shavat on January 31st, which is this blue moon, super moon, blood moon. And it hasn't happened in 150 years. And um, it's like a new year for trees. And I've done a video, oh my goodness, months and months and months ago, kind of talking about this topic and I actually went perfect when I actually saw um, him talking about this, you know, this whole new year for trees. And this is a, a marking of the passing of winter into spring. Okay. And we're on the cusp of, of many great things. You know, um, we're on the cusp of uh, the restoration of God's chosen people, you know, we're on the cusp of the other nations realizing who we are. And really, you know, I mean, like I said, my, my understanding, my studies have gone different directions at times. Um, and my focus isn't always the same. My focus isn't right now always about getting the other nations, well, it's not really at all about getting the other nations to acknowledge who we are, because that's not up to me. That's up to the most high. You know, and I used to fight that because I would, when I first got into the truth, I was, um, you know, really fighting with uh, other nations, trying to get them to, can't you see who we are? Can't you see who we are? And fighting with people about that. And, you know, it made so much to the point where it kind of, it made me sick, you know, because it's like, it's so easy to see how come you can't see it. But then when you really get a good grasp of the understanding of this knowledge, you realize, you know, you're not fighting these these Gentiles or even your own brethren. When you think like that, you're fighting the most high because the most high is the one that has blinded them. And now that I've understood that I've been, you know, a lot more peace with the way that I'm being used or the way I've been used and the way I'm still being used going forward. Now, um, when you guys look at this, is this, if you have a chance to look at the video, I don't know if it's around a 30, one 34 minute mark when it talks about the to be Shabbat, but you, it's a good thing to watch the whole video if you're interested in it. You know, I'll say I'll leave it in the description box. But when it's talking about the um, this blue super moon, you know, I, I, I'm going to talk about a, a few things that I saw that kind of um, I thought were really interesting. And um, but you know, you can read it, you can look at it yourself and kind of see what it is that you think about the video. But there was one thing before I get into the whole thing with the trees, I want to look at this. There's a certain part that talks about 2,520 days. I think that has to do with the whole seven year period. Um, you know, they talk about tribulation period. 
And what's kind of crazy is um, on March 11th, you guys know what happened on March 11th, 2011? Well, this day is really significant. On March 11th, if you look at from March 11th, 2011 to February 2nd, 2018, that's 2,520 days or like the, uh, I want to say like the uh, seven year tribulation period. Do you guys have a chance to kind of think about that? What happened on March 11th, 2011? That was the date of the um, Fukushima incident. And the tsunami that came in there and, and destroyed the Fukushima uh, radio uh, nuclear plants. Okay. And that was really the marking of the end of the Gentile reign. If you understand what's, what, how, how the severity of the Fukushima um, disaster and how they could never fix it, all they can do is just take it out of media circulation. So most people don't even realize that it's still going on and that every single day, um, this radioactive water is being pumped into the ocean and it's um, contaminating everything and it's going to contaminate everything for thousands and thousands of years but the fact that this um, event happened 2,520 days before the February 2nd 2018 date is very significant so now we've had seven years you know of all these different signs Okay, leading up to this February 2nd, 2018 date. Okay, because, um, you know, this all goes back to Nebuchadnezzar and the four kingdoms and things like that. That's why you have to watch the video. I'm not going to get into it because it's a lot of information. I've watched I've watched this video uh, for a, a, quite a few times. You know, I'm still picking up parts of it. So if you were interested, in it, you'll, you'll look at it yourself. But I just found it really, um, really interesting that at the Fukushima event happened 2,520 days ago. Uh, well, from February 2nd, 2018. That, like I told you, was the beginning of the end of the Gentile rule. There will be no, you know, everything going back to normal after that, you know, situation. That's just a sign that lets you know that this is game, set, match. This is over. Now, from February 2nd, 2018, you go another 2,520 days. You get to December 26th, 2024, which is like the the second seven-year tribulation period. But like I said, you need to go back to the video, check out the video I'll leave in the description box, check it out for yourself and see what you come up with, okay? Um, well, what I, through my studies, I've realized, and if you look in the Bible, it always talks about how the second is greater than the first. That's a theme that's uh, repeated through the Bible numerous times, that the second is greater than the first. Now, there was a seven-year many little tribulation period where, you know, the Gentiles and the other nations have manipulated situations to kind of fulfill prophecy in order for people to believe that um, the people over there in Israel are the real Israelites. And those are the people that we need to uh, use to fill out, find out where we are today as far as Bible prophecy is concerned. Okay. And, you know, and I, at this point, if that's what people want to believe, go right ahead. Like I said, I'm not here to change any minds because that's not what this is all about. This isn't about changing minds. I've never converted anyone. Change your mind. Only thing I've been used to do is activate a seed that's already been implanted. That's it. That's all that any of us have been able to do. So when you hear people in churches like, I've won a hundred souls for Christ. You can't win something. I mean, if you didn't, if you weren't Christ in the first place, you can't be one for him. Like I said, if you weren't on this team in the beginning, you can't be on his team later. You know, and he's using the people on his team to wake up the ones, okay, who have that special DNA, that special spirit at this point, okay? And like I said, um, you know, you start looking at all the dates, all the things that have been happening um, in the land of Israel. Those other things are significant. I found one that was actually another one that was, I thought that was pretty interesting was the date um, for the UN vote. Uh, to condemn Donald Trump um, for uh, for recognizing Israel, um, the, but the Jerusalem for Israel was on like I want to say it was around December twenty first, which was actually forty two days, I think, from the February second date, and the number forty two, in, in the biblical term, means slaughter. You know, if you took it, they gave a couple of examples about the whole number 42 and slaughter and things like that. So like I said, there's a whole lot of, I mean, there's so much information in here. 
that I found it a very, very interesting. You know, now what I want to go back to really quick, like I said it's going to be a really long video, um, is I want to look at this to be Shavat on January 31st. Okay. And the uh, new year for trees and how actually, you know, it, it, it links up perfectly with hidden books. Because, I mean, you, you kind of hear that here, New Year for Trees. Man, that's weird. That doesn't make any sense. What does that mean? Well, if you had some of the other books, you would understand what the whole significance of the trees means. Okay? And I'm going to read that real quick for you. This is from the third book of Hermas, chapter 4. Okay? It goes, Again, he showed me many other trees, of which some had leaves, and others appeared dry and withered. And he said unto me, Seest thou these trees? I answered, Sir, I see them. And some are dry, and others full of leaves. These trees, saith he, which are green, are the righteous, which shall possess the world to come. For the world to come is the summer to the righteous, but to sinners it is winter. When, therefore, the mercy of the Lord shall shine forth, then they who serve the Most High shall be made manifest and plain unto all. For as in the summer, the fruit of every tree is shown and made manifest, so also the works of the righteous shall be declared and made manifest, and they shall be restored in that world merry and joyful. For the other nations, kind of men, namely the wicked, like the trees which thou sawest dry, shall as such be found dry and without fruit in that other world, and like dry wood shall be burnt, and it shall be made manifest that they have done evil all the time of their life. And they shall be burnt because they have sinned and have not repented of their sins. And also all the other nations shall be burnt, because they have not acknowledged the Most High, their Creator. Do thou therefore bring forth good fruit, that in the summer thy fruit may be known, and keep thyself from much business, and thou shalt not offend. For they who are involved in much business sin much, because they are taken up with the affairs and serve not the Most High. Okay. Now you kind of look at that. And I mean, that makes a whole lot of sense. It's talking about the leaves of the tree, and and, and, and actually, to be Shavat goes perfectly with you know this chapter here. Okay, because it talks about moving from winter into summer, and in the summer, the ones that have been serving the Most High will become manifest to all, which is then lets you know that during the time of the winter, which is the time of this world, they're not going to know who we are. So us trying to fight with everyone, trying to get them to accept who we are, is really, you know, a non-starter because they're not going to get it because the Most High says they're not going to get it, no matter how much we fight. Okay? You know, I've learned that quite a bit, especially the, you know, the last few months. You know, I've learned to uh, let the Most High and the Holy Spirit use me the way they want to use me, not me trying to force myself on other people. You know, and I'll tell you like a little story. Um, I happen to be working out in another gym in another city where I don't usually work out. Um, and I just happened to be there this day. Uh, this happened a week or two ago. And this older gentleman, you know, it's a two-story gym. And um, this older gentleman got out of the elevator. And I'm kind of, uh, you know, doing some push-ups and sit-ups and, and whatever else. And he just walks straight over to me like he knew me older white gentleman um, and just starts talking to me uh, like we've known each other for years. Now, um, you know, I would say, you know, a lot of people don't know what I look like, but uh, I could be pretty intimidating. I'm a pretty big guy, um, you know, pretty big. Um, so for some, most people don't even, you know, want to even talk, look away. They don't really want to, you know, have much of a conversation uh, because of the way that I look. Um, but this guy came straight over to me 
and just starts talking to me about conspiracy theories. And it talked to me about this guy who was writing a book about uh, Oklahoma City bombing and how it was an inside job. And I was like, oh, yeah, I believe that. And I said, oh, just like, you know, 9-11. And all, we started getting into this, these conversations. And he's like, wow, this is amazing because most people that I talk to, you know, think that I'm crazy. I said, well, that's because most people in this world are zombies who have no idea about absolutely anything. If I'm talking about Kim Kardashian, Kanye West. Migos or any rappers or these, you know, any of this kind of stuff, you know, Cardi B, any of that kind of stuff, people want to talk to you. You start talking about anything that's going on, they don't want to hear anything. They, 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 they don't even want to have that conversation. They don't even want to start it. So, you know, he was talking to me and uh, we were talking about some of the things that were going on in the world. And I was talking about, um, you know, who the real Hebrews were. And you should have saw his face. He looked like, I mean, of, of, he had all this information and all this knowledge about all these different things, but that was something that he had never heard of before. And you saw his eyes just get huge. He's like, well, yeah, well, well, I'm Jewish. I said, oh, okay, well, that's cool. You know, but I started breaking it down a little bit to him. And um, he goes, well, yeah, but that's, but uh, I'm a Christian now. And this is, I said, well, he said, this is what the Bible says. And he kind of just broke, broke a couple things down to him. And you can kind of tell, you could just look at his eyes and just see the information turning in his head. Because now, you know, and I see how the Most High used me in that situation. Yeah, he had a lot of knowledge and understanding, but he was lacking in wisdom. And if he accepts it or not or whatever, that's up to him. But at least he got exposed. He, he won't have an excuse later to say he'd never heard who the real Hebrews, who were the real chosen people are. You know, and so like I said, the Most High can you will use you in many different ways, in many different avenues. You know, so it, 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 like a lot of times now, I'm seeing that a lot of these people are, a lot of people are getting exposed to this information, not necessarily for them to understand it, not necessarily for them to accept it, but for the fact that when this place is destroyed, or when they stand in front of the Most High, they will not have an excuse to say, "I never knew." No one ever told me who your God, who your chosen people were. Because this gentleman, I want to say he was in his 60s, maybe he's in the 60s or 70s. He was retired. And you could tell, like, he, like he'd never even heard that before. You know, because people don't even, you know, question, you know, who the, who the chosen people are. So, like I said, you know, people are welcome to, you know, come up with their own understandings as far as things are concerned. Because, like I said, I can't change what, what's in people's spirits, what the Most High has put in their spirit. All I can do is plant seeds and keep it moving. And that's what I'm doing. Okay. Like I said, in this third book of Hermes, what's going to happen is soon it's going to be manifest to the whole world who we are. And when it is, it is going to be, I mean, it's just going to be on a massive scale of, of people just being totally shocked of who his chosen people are. Who are the people who have been um, uh, actually producing fruits? Cause a lot of people think that because they give a couple of money, they give a couple of dollars to the church uh, or they're giving money to, or they're giving food to just random people that those are producing fruits. Okay. But there's a lot more to it than it goes, goes to that. And this goes with, you know, and this goes with um, the Bible. Because what's going to happen is it's, it's got to be a point where everyone is going to be shocked as to who are the chosen people. That that has to come to fruition because that's what's talked about in scriptures. I was actually talking about this with my family a little bit earlier. I'm going to read some of it real quick. Revelations 11. Um, let's go start at 8. Revelations 11 and 8. And their dead body shall lie in the street of the great city which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, which also our Lord was crucified. And they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half and shall not suffer their, do their dead bodies to be put in graves. Now, this kind of goes with that 2,520 days from um, Fukushima even till now, till February 2nd. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall send gifts one to another because these two prophets tormented them that dwelt on the earth. And those two prophets to me are 
uh, northern, northern and southern kingdom. But like I said, people, you're welcome to believe, you know, have your own interpretation. That's fine. 1111. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from the Most High entered into them, and they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them which saw them. So once we start you know, waking up, showing our leaves, everyone gets a chance to see who really has leaves and who's uh, and which trees are, are withered and have no, no fruits, no, no leaves or anything. Let's go to 12. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. So when they see them, you know, them being manifested, and they're going to be taken away, and the enemies are going to see them, how do you think the world is going to react? How do you think the other nations are going to react to the things that we've been telling them? And they didn't believe us. You just imagine, could you imagine the shock? Okay, if you go to 13, when they're taken away, and the same hour was there a great earthquake, and the tenth part of the city fell, and in the earthquake were slain of men 7,000, and the remnant were affrighted, and gave glory to the Most High of Heaven. Okay, you know, and I guess, like I said, that's that goes back to that whole thing with the, the trees and being manifested. I mean, you're going to be manifested in front of the other nations. Not before the Most High says it's okay. When he gives the go sign, that's when we are going to become manifested. And people are going to know. Some people are blessed to know who we are already. And that's a huge blessing. But the ones who have been blinded are in for the shock. The shock of ages. Shock of all, all time. You know, and this goes with one of my other favorite uh, few verses here from the Wisdom of Solomon. Chapter 5. Then shall the righteous man stand in great boldness before the face of such as have afflicted him and made no account of his labors. When you see it, when they see it, they shall be troubled with terrible fear and shall be amazed at the strangeness of his salvation so far beyond all that they looked for. And they repenting and groaning for anguish of spirit shall say within themselves, here it is. This is that manifestation again. Here's that manifestation of the trees again. Who has the leaves? Who has the most high been dealing with? Who has the fruit? Here we go with number uh, verse uh, four. We fools accounted his life madness and his end to be without honor. How is he numbered among the children of the most high? And his lot is among the saints. Therefore have we erred from the way of truth and the light of righteousness hath not shined unto us and the sun of righteousness rose not upon us. We wearied ourselves in the way of wickedness and destruction. Yea, we have gone through deserts where there lay no way, but as for the way of the most high, we have not known it. But hath, uh, but what hath pride profited us or what good hath riches with our vaunting brought us. All those things are passed away like a shadow and as a post that hasted away, hasted by. So you see now, like I said, that's, you get that first, you get this first seven years from Fukushima about March 11th up here till February 2nd, 2018. You're starting to see all these calamities coming on the earth. No way out. No way to fix these problems. This was the first like seven year period. Okay. Remember the greater is a second. Second is greater than the first. You know, we thought that was bad, but wait until the next seven. And when, uh, if he removes his people or however he decides to implement his judgment, that's on the most, I have no idea. Okay. That's how he wants to do it. You know, I haven't every day for me, just like every day for all of us, is um it is an adventure because we don't know if it could be our last okay so i'm not making plans for 15 years down the road 20 years down the road if i retire and this and that okay i mean from what i'm looking at i mean war is on on the cusp everything is falling apart 
there's, I mean, I have to look up every single day and there's just chemtrails all over the place where they're trying to hide things. And so, like I said, so the people are welcome to believe whatever it is they want. What I do know is this, that people are not going to know who God's chosen people are. There's going to be a long time of that during the time of the Gentiles. And then it's just going to be manifested in the blink of an eye and everyone's going to see it. And then everyone's going to be shocked. Now, like I said, the super blood moon and everything else, I said it's all, it all ties in really well. Take a look at the video. Like I said, I don't co-sign for this information. I just, hey, I thought it was interesting, so I wanted to share it. What it is you guys will do with it is up to you. Okay, but I thought it was very interesting. Just like, I, I mean, I'm sure so you guys noticed about the whole 400, the acknowledgement of the 400 years of our captivity, and they're passing legislation about that. Why would they do stuff like that at this point? That's something that they've been trying to keep on the hush hush on the down low this entire time why are they passing things like this at this point why why now because it's time brethren it's time and the multi is making it plain through all these different signs you know and now like i said i pray that the holy spirit blesses you okay and uh, and blesses your understanding and imparts wisdom to the chosen to the ones that are supposed to have it. Pray that the Most High blesses you and keeps you on the straight path and uses you to do His will, okay? I, I pray that they use you in order for you to be able to uh, manifest fruits and the very near future is going to be manifested to everyone who the Most High has been dealing with and who He has not been dealing with. It's going to be manifested who has, who has been blessed and who has not been blessed. Many people have been blessed here in this world but you could tell, but many few, very few people are happy with the blessings that they have received in this world. I am ready for whatever it is the Most High wants to bring. I'm ready to see him work in more um, extravagant ways than we've already seen. But like I said, when you look at the video, check out the dates, check out the information. It's just, it's amazing how everything lines up and how, like I said, the super blood moon and how rare it is. It hasn't happened for 150 years and all these different things that are going on. It's just absolutely amazing. With that, I want to say uh, blessings to the to the brethren. I pray that uh, you keep on studying and learning and growing. Okay? Shalom.